I'm Amy Goodman. This is The War and Peace Report. And remember, you can turn to us for uh, so many of the climate actions that will be taking place over the next two weeks. And if you go to democracynow.org, uh, we will link to today's opening ceremony inside the COP. But today, we end looking at the U.S. torture program. Seven senior military officers who served on a jury at a trial at Guantanamo have written an extraordinary letter decrying the CIA's torture program, describing it as a stain on the moral fiber of America. The officers had served on the jury of the case of Majid Khan, a former resident of Maryland who was tortured in CIA black sites for years after being detained in Pakistan. On Thursday, Khan became the first Guantanamo prisoner to describe in an open court the CIA's torture methods at its black sites. For more than two hours, Majid Khan described force feedings, waterboarding, other physical and sexual abuse he endured, including extended periods of nudity, while he was detained in the CIA's network of overseas prisons from 2003 to 6. On Friday, Majid Khan, who's admitted to being a courier for al Qaeda, was sentenced to 26 years, but under a deal he scheduled for release in February. In the letter, the military jurors wrote, quote, Mr. Khan was subjected to physical and psychological abuse well beyond approved enhanced interrogation techniques, instead being closer to torture performed by the most abusive regimes in modern history. We are joined now by Bahar Azmi. He is legal director of the Center for Constitutional Rights, which helped represent Majid Khan. Um, Bahar, thanks for coming back on Democracy Now! Can you talk about the significance um, of this testimony. Uh, today's New York Times front page, military jurors rebuke torture as moral stain. Uh, thank you, Amy, for um, making time to cover this remarkable story. Um, this is the first um, proceeding under the military commission's process where a survivor of the U.S. torture program actually got to testify under agreed upon procedures. In the military commission system, it's actually jurors that um, hear the, the sentencing, and they were selected, as any jurors would be, uh, for impartiality and a lack of familiarity with the case. And what they heard uh, was a young man describe how, uh, in his early 20s, uh, he was impressionable and went awry. Uh, but Majid Khan, to his credit, uh, detailed the systematic, brutal, sadistic uh, torture of U.S. government officials, namely the CIA, uh, which for um, nearly 20 years the U.S. government has tried to keep secret. But to the credit of Majid Khan and his lawyers, they leveraged this proceeding to get some form of redress for his torture, namely a reduced sentence because of the admission around uh, his brutal torture. Um, and open testimony where he could speak to the public, um, to his family, who saw him for the first time, and to military officials who are utterly repulsed by the conduct of the United States government. So tell us what happened to him and the number of cases you represented around him. Well, um, he was uh, <clears throat> one of a number of uh, what the CIA called high-value detainees who were, you know, spirited to one of the numerous uh, overseas secret detention sites uh, subject to CIA superintendents of interrogation and tortured and tortured and tortured, even as he was um, uh, sharing information and cooperating. They believed in the perverse logic of this authoritarian regime. That was only proof that he had more to, information to give. Uh, and then he was ultimately transferred to Guantanamo in 2006, after the Supreme Court intimated that holding people um, in secret CIA detention would violate the Geneva Conventions. It's at that point the Center for Constitutional Rights uh, chose to represent him among, um, you know, uh, nearly two dozen other uh, detainees in different parts of the U.S. detention program. Um, and he and his lawyers fought consistently to get some sort of recognition and um, documentation about his torture. And over and over again, a little bit more of the iceberg was revealed. Um, 
And as much as he was able to share, it's still just the top part of the iceberg. Um, the Senate Select Intelligence report regarding torture hasn't been fully declassified. Uh, we need to hear from other victims of the CIA torture program. And we need more meaningful accountability for what the United States government did to Majid uh, and many dozens of other uh, detainees in the so-called global war on terror. Majid accused CIA medics of raping him through rectal feeding. Yeah, that's been documented. Um, and there's a level of uh, sadism here that um, happened when the United States abandoned any commitment to legal constraint um, and turned over. I mean, I think what's interesting here is that this is the U.S. military um, uh, jurors selected from the United States military expressing revulsion for the conduct of civilian um, civilians who ordered the torture, namely Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, uh, John Yu, and other like repellent, uh, so far unaccountable uh, individuals from the Bush administration, uh, judging them for violating basic um, legal and humanitarian norms. Bob um, Rosme, we just really have 30 remarkable. seconds. Yeah. Uh, it is expected Majid will be released in February. Uh, what, 38 men will remain at Guantanamo? What is the Biden administration doing? Are they going to close Guantanamo? Um, I think they, they, they are uh, supposedly working behind the scenes, but they need to do far more to ensure uh, the safe release and transfer of all 38 detainees, um, including Majid Khan. Um, and in his case, to be sent to a place where he's free, will have emotional and psychological support uh, and connection to his family. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us, Bahar Azmi, legal director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is currently accepting application for a director of finance administration, also a human resources manager. Check it out at democracynow.org. And stay with us throughout these two weeks. Democracy Now! is your place for the U.N. Climate Summit and everywhere around the world. I'm Amy Goodman.